So John Christensen is joining us from the Tax Justice Network and uh, he will be here on the Isle of Man on Monday. He will be presenting a film at, uh, for PAG and that will be at the Manx Museum. I want to come to that in a minute, but uh, first, sir, uh, obviously the, the, the main topic of conversation is these Paradise Papers and the leak that's gone on. And the Isle of Man's implications is obviously what we're interested in. You watch the Panorama programme, no doubt. Did you think it was fair and balanced, and, and do you think it had any particular ramifications for us? Yes, I think the, the programme was fair, um, uh, and I think it has massive ramifications for the Isle of Man. Um, it does seem to me to be clear, coming out of the Panorama pro programme and out of the Paradise Leaks more generally, that we still have a major problem on the islands, and I'm talking about all the Crown dependencies, and the British territories. And this programme has massively, un I think, undermined our political credibility. Um, there are still very big unanswered questions coming out of the programme. To what extent, for example, did very senior officials and very senior politicians um, connive or collude, if you wish, with big companies in tax avoidance schemes? Um, I think that that's that's one of the really big things that come out of it. And of course, as a Jersey man, Jersey also featured very heavily, you know, around the Apple story. Has Jersey now been doing deals with Apple? Um, what's the nature of those those deals? Will they comply with European competition law? Um, and I think more generally, this is a time for us to reflect on whether or not our politicians and our officials are actually doing their best to. Um, over to, to put tax haven activity behind us. I mean, I watched it in, in a sense, I, I saw it in, and it has been described as entertainment television to some degree. I mean, there was a lot of bluster in there. It was, you know, sexed up with the music and the graphics and that sort of thing. I mean, and obviously there were very serious issues in there. Um, the Isle of Man seemed to feature probably heavily, more heavy than other jurisdictions, yet they all seem to be doing roughly the same thing. Do you think that in that sense the Isle of Man got a fair play? on that programme? Well, I agree with the points you make about the way the panorama tends to glitch things up. I don't enormously feel comfortable with that, but the, you know, the directors will tell us, or the producers will tell us that that's what the public wants these days. Um, I think, um, you know, uh, any island or any tax haven that comes into the, into focus will say, why pick on, on us? And um, uh, yes, the Isle of Man did feature very heavily. But then they're very heavily featured in some of the leaks and some of the stories they've picked up on for the Panorama programme that obviously have, have the Isle of Man at the core of it. And, and it's not often you actually pick up on evidence, on hard documented evidence, that senior government officials have been making arrangements or agreements with, um, with other individuals or, or companies. Um, here was the evidence, they had that evidence, they presented it to, to, to the officials. Um, who quite clearly refused to um, comment on it. And that makes for good television. It, it, uh, for me, I think that was actually one of the better parts of the Panorama program. Here you have officials who refuse to comment. They're just not accountable to, to the media. And they should be accountable to the media because the media have played such an important part in bringing the role of tax havens to the public uh, attention. Use this word tax havens. The other man would obviously say, and they've done everything they they, they could to say they're not a tax haven. And even uh, Cameron in, in the Commons actually stated that he didn't think the uh, offshores were now, you know, the, the the crown dependencies were tax havens. Is that the right word? Uh, well, I mean, we use several terms. Uh, it, it, it's clearly the tax haven um, moniker applies where deals are being struck between the government and companies, the tax haven moniker is appropriate. Um, the other term we use is secrecy jurisdiction. Are secret deals being hidden behind offshore structures in the Isle of Man? I think the answer to that is clearly yes. So I think it's fair to say that uh, the Isle of Man is both a secrecy jurisdiction and a tax haven. As far as the former prime minister is concerned, I'm afraid that when he stood up in parliament um, at that time and said, look, it's unfair to call the Crown Dependencies and Overseas Territories tax havens. Um, at that time, we were about to publish our Financial Secrecy Index, which showed you know, clear deficiencies across all of the Overseas Territories and all of the Crown Dependencies, and those deficiencies remain in place today. And yet the so, City um, of London seems to be on that list as well, if I remember rightly. 
you know. Happen. Absolutely, and if you know, if you, if you, I mean, one of the important things about the film that was screening in the Isle of Man, the Spider's Web, is it puts the city of London's role is right at the centre. You know, the film is essentially a film about the city of London, and uh, the Crown dependencies, Isle of Man, Guernsey, and Jersey, and the overseas territories are dependencies. They're they're, they're UK dependencies. It's, clear that this is where the City of London does a lot of its offshore business. Okay, but let's talk about your film. I mean, this is, is timing's amazing. Pag, you're putting this on. Uh, the, the, as I said, at the Manx Museum. You're coming, you're coming over, aren't you, for it as well? No, actually, I, I'm afraid I can't ah. come over. I'm actually screen, uh, attending another screening, and that's why I hope that this, um, this video interview will be something of a kind of preamble to the screening of the film. Well, tell us but about what you It's just know... been released. It was premiered in London in, uh, in July. Uh, and it's released this month, so it's now on public release, uh, and we hope it'll attract a lot of audiences, because this is such an important issue. And as I say, it puts it puts the city of London's role um, right at the core. The, the film is essentially about the city of London and Britain's post-empire development strategy. That's why we call the, the subtitle of the film, the film itself is called The Spider's Web, um, but the, the, the subtitle is Britain's... Uh, Britain's Second Empire, and we're looking at how after the, the, the end of the formal empire, if you will, um, Britain went ahead with a development strategy which put the City of London right at the core of it and helped the City of London develop tax havens in many of Britain's overseas territories. Can I ask you how the Isle of Man will feature on this film then? The Isle of Man doesn't actually doesn't play a central role by any means. Does it get it's mentions or does it get... Uh... A panorama sort of item in, in there at all, or is it you lost? Not directly. No, not directly. The Isle of Man. Um, we, we, we talked about the Crown dependencies. We talked about the overseas territories, um, but as far as we're concerned, these are very closely associated with the City of London. And this is the film about the City of London itself and its role as the world's biggest offshore financial centre, and as the world's biggest secrecy jurisdiction, because we 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 think that the overseas territories and the Crown dependencies are so intimately linked to the City of London, you can't really detach them. Did you get cooperation with people? I mean, you're saying about people not talking to, you know, like, like Panorama. I mean, there we had our own Chief Minister volunteering to go on the programme. Do you think he was ill-advised to do that? Or what you saw, were you happy with what you, you, he said? No, I regret you are not happy. I think he was, he, he, you know, he, he's a, a politician, he's accountable to the media, he's accountable to the BBC, and therefore it's absolutely right that he uh, uh, sits in front of camera and answers these questions on the Isle of Man's behalf. But I'm afraid to say he came across as rather evasive, um, because, um, you know, he, he, he knew what information was out there, he knew that Panorama had this information, and he ducked the questions. Um, I think... Of even greater concern is that uh, former officials um, in front of camera, OK, they were being doorstepped, but that's a perfectly legitimate uh, journalist strategy, to absolutely refused to cooperate. Uh, and that doesn't uh, that reflects so badly on the Isle of Man um, and, and in the same way that, you know, I was, I was in Jersey in early September. Um, with a Danish uh, television cam uh, company, and, and, and we were uh, obviously talking with officials about the um, the Appleby papers. Um, and again, we were we were brick walled. We you know absolutely no cooperation whatsoever. At one level, it makes for good television. At the second, at another level, it it shows that our governments are just not accountable to to the media. Yeah, but to be fair, I think to be fair, at the time he didn't know what the allegations were even going to be, so he was sort of sat in front of the thing for fifty five minutes, he says, and he ends up what with ninety seconds worth. I mean, you know, again, this is television purposes, isn't it? This is make it televisually exciting, and he says it was heavily edited. Of course, it's heavily edited. Invariably, it's heavily ed edited. But um, without calling into question what he's saying here, what normally happens, all good journalists will say, here are the documents. What are your comments on this? So he might not have had an enormous amount of time to prepare, but he will almost certainly have seen the documents ahead. I, I've never been involved in any uh, uh, television program where a journalist sort of surprises me um, without giving me some access to what data they have available to them. That would be professionally very bad practice. And yet, of course, no no showing by Jersey or Guernsey's chief ministers on that programme, although I, I know Guernsey's has been on Sky News just the other day. But uh, in that sense, the, the it, do you think more focus was put on the Isle of Man because they had this cooperation with the chief minister? It almost made them go down our route rather than look at Guernsey and Jersey, which only got a pretty short mention in, 
in it, com you know, comparatively to what the other man. I'm just trying, to, you know, about balance. I think it's a fair think, comment, Paul. I mean, it, 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 it's true that um, I think the biggest story they covered. I mean, the, 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 for me, the really big story is the Apple story, and the Apple story is a story about Jersey, and it's a story about uh, an island which. Time and again has said we put our tax haven days behind us. We're now a reputable international financial centre, and we're no longer doing tax haven stuff. But it's quite clear from the Apple B leaks that they've been doing special deals with uh, with Apple. Apple selected them very carefully on the basis of some, fr frankly, rather unpleasant and unflattering criteria. Like, does this place have? Uh, democratic arrangements which might actually interfere with the, with the deals we're doing here. Um, uh, and I think that it, it, that, that was the biggest story. Um, I think, I, yes, I think the beauty contest that went on there was quite bizarre. But again, you know, um, does the other man any different? I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get the point. Are we, in your views, doing exactly the same thing? Or as uh, you'll hear from the government, we're, we're highly regulated and he's prepared to apologise if, if he has crossed the line. I mean, what do you think to that? Well, I mean, we look forward now to the apology because, um, as, as we saw, uh, Panorama have the evidence that these deals have been struck. Um, and the, the, the Prime Minister said, I will apologise if the evidence shows that the deal has been struck. So it's time, I'm afraid, for the Prime Minister to come forward and accept that um, a mistake has been made. And the Isle of Man's reputation has been brought into, into, into a disrepute. Um, and, and this now needs to be clarified. OK, well, the programme is due to go on BBC World at the weekend numerous times. So the damage... Can continue, continue to be seen, I suppose, or, or see the bad publicity. Um, a way out of this, um, you just want to see the whole finance industry of the offshores uh, amalgamated into uh, one system with the United Kingdom, so there's no preferentials here at all? I, I don't think that would be desirable. I mean, let's face it, every, uh, place in the, every place in the world needs to have some kind of financial system. We all need banks, we all need insurance companies, we all need accountants, so that's not, not the issue here. I think at a, at a, uh, nationally, I think the Chief Minister now needs to come forward and say, look, we have been doing these deals, we're going to cease doing these deals, um, uh, and we're going to become more transparent. We, the Tax Justice Network, have been calling for a very, very long time for um, public registry, not just of companies, but also of trusts. Uh, here we haven't seen cooperation from any of the Crown dependencies or overseas territories. Let's see progress there, because as long as we see the uh, overseas territories and the Crown dependencies refusing uh, former Prime Minister Cameron's request to make the registries public. I'm afraid inevitably we're going to be suspicious. We're going to be suspicious of what's going on here. And, and also I think it's time to accept that the days of doing special deals with big companies, which give them a tax advantage, uh, are now over. The European Commission is quite rightly challenging them, saying these are anti-market these break um, the market rules, um, so we, we need to put them behind us. Right. It, it, at the end of the day, there's going to be another country somewhere in the world that will take these people, right? It, it's, it's almost like, should we have them or, or, or will they go to a, some more obscure country with even more dubious methods that will allow anything to go on? No, I, no I, I, I don't accept that, Paul. I mean, at the end of the day, what's going to happen is we're going to have a new framework of international rules, which mean, for example, that companies that don't disclose who they are, who owns them, will be barred from, for example, government procurements. You know, in other words, governments will not, do, will not give them contracts to do any kind of public sector activity. And it might well be that they will be banned and sanctioned entirely um, from operating in any jurisdiction, because... You know, rule one of economics is transparency. That is, we know who we're dealing with. You cannot contract with people when you don't actually know who, who are hiding behind these offshore companies. And I think we're moving to a time when um, governments will be much, much harder in, in demanding complete transparency if there's going to be any kind of public procurement. And also, I think we're going to... And let's face it, Applebee is the, the, the law firm at the heart of the, um, this leak, which is an enormous leak. But Applebee is only one of many others. There are nine so-called offshore magic circle law firms operating offshore. This leak could have, have, have occurred to any of those. Or I, I understand it's a hack, actually. Uh, this hack could have hit any of those law firms that all have exactly the same problem. So I think we need to now look at the roles that the law firms and the lawyers and are you comfortable that a hack is illegal in that sense? I mean, this is stolen information, isn't it? 
I, I don't really accept that. I think, you know, um, the fact that so much of this information is being kept from the public and hidden behind dubious offshore structures calls into question the role of the law firms. For, for a very long time, they've been using um, shell companies and offshore trusts to hide their client data from scrutiny, including scrutiny by um, government investigating agencies. Um, I'm afraid we live in the 21st century. Hacks are an inevitable part of life. Um, and I think that law firms need to go with that, live with it now. Uh, more importantly, I think they now need to start recognizing that the days where they could help their clients, I'm going to use the word collude with their clients in setting up dodgy structures, are over. Uh, law firms are legitimate targets now for hackers. Wow. wow, okay. Well, listen, the, the, the film you're showing, everyone's welcome to um, Max Museum on Monday night, and uh, that's your, the spider's web. Great. And you're involved in that. Well, this is your baby. Is it your film? Yeah, well, I, I co-produced it um, with a, a director called Michael Oswald. Um, Michael Oswald and I are now working on another film, a follow-up, a sequel. Every good film has to have a sequel. We start production this month, uh, and we're going to look very much more closely at how this the, the, the tax havens have shaped a, a criminogenic global economy, have, uh, have um, given rise to greater inequality across the world, and have um, captured many of the states, including arguably the Isle of Man and the Channel Islands, Jersey, for example, my home island, but above all have captured the city of London giving rise to a phenomenon which economists call the finance curse. So the next film is about the finance curse. So you have My your ticket booked children. for the Isle of Man? Sorry? You have your ticket booked for the island to come here? I'm, sorry, I just put my camera back up again. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just I'm saying uh, you, you've um, got your ticket booked for the no, Isle of Man. Um, I you'll be visiting here to film. The Isle of Man to show that film. But you'll be visiting the Isle of Man to make your next film. Very much hope so. Look forward to it.